Hi, Dan Aker here, Operations Manager of the Ontario Regiment Museum, and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, M113s. We have a wide variety of M113s and their variants in our collection. Uh, this is just to give you a pretty good version of the basic M113. Um, this one is done as a Gulf War vehicle. There's a couple of things about uh, the front of the vehicles that are extremely standard. I mean, you have the variety of lights at the front. You would have here mounted smoke grenade dischargers, okay, protected by this metal. Most vehicles would have a wooden trim vane. It's a wooden board that's on the front of the vehicle that can be pushed forward to allow them to become, uh, to create a false bow when they go into amphibious operations. This one, however, in the Gulf War, there wasn't uh, too many river crossings in the desert, so a lot of the trim veins were removed and additional, uh, a shelf for additional storage was installed. And we've just put the, uh, the shelf on side. Uh, it has to be painted, and it's still a work in progress. You see the driver in the front, the engine on the left as we are looking at it, crew commander behind it with a machine gun mount. Uh, some machine gun mounts do have a shield on them. We're going to talk about the insides of the vehicles and the wide variety of variants of this family. And as we've talked in the past, families are important because if a company or a battalion goes in the field and the majority of their vehicles are of the same family, they have to uh, only bring the parts required for those vehicles. And since there's such a commonality of parts, in the family, uh, it makes uh, supply a lot easier. And then also for driver training. You train a driver on one vehicle, he understands that vehicle. Various variants have small little modifications that they have to learn, but the basic knowledge, how to drive, how to maintain, is generally the same. So for parts commonality, for training, um, it's a perfect system. Okay, so this is an M113 standard with the trim vane. So the trim vane is just a simple board. You can take it, pull it down, lock it in place. It creates a false bow because what happens when the vehicle hits the water is that with this natural slope, there's a downward pressure to push the nose under the water. So the trim vane actually creates a positive pressure to keep the nose higher. Most M113s had at one time in their lives trim vanes in the front. I'm just continuing our little discussion on the M113. This is the basic infantry carrier version of the M113. Um, you're looking at me through the uh, door at the rear of the ramp. The actual ramp falls down in combat or is lowered in combat. If it falls down, that's probably not a good thing. So it will lower in combat to allow the infantry to come out, the, the crew to come out. Um, the passengers are sitting on both sides on benches facing inwards. Um, I am sitting in what we used as the section commander dismount seat. Behind me, there is the seat for the crew commander and the driver. The driver and the crew commander remain with the vehicle. So once the infantry is out, the vehicle will either fire, provide fire support or will retreat to a parking area that's known as a Zulu Harbor. Um, so not the most comfortable, uh, what's also important is you have right above me what's known as a cargo hatch. Uh, this hatch actually is open, so it's much more breathable and gives us some light in here. Uh, but it can remain open in combat. A lot of uh, vehicles in Vietnam uh, used to have guns on various shields, the ACAV vehicles, armored cavalry, uh, with additional machine guns. You can fight out of it. Um, of course, you're more vulnerable to artillery, so in a non in a more conventional environment the cargo hatch is usually closed i think that's about it